Hi everyone, it's Adam with Mago's Restoration and today I've got a furniture flipping video for you but it's going to be a little bit different because instead of using lacquer or paint like I normally do I'm going to actually be using like automotive paint and specifically single stage enamel and I'm going to talk about why I did that later but yeah, here's the video and um, this set of nightstands I found on Facebook Marketplace and I paid $40 for them I think So this is just more of the normal kind of stuff. You know, I used alcohol and crud cutter to clean this piece because sometimes pledge or any kind of like coatings like that, you know, I, I found that bottle of pledge in there. That's never a good sign. It's always something that can really contaminate your paint. So that's just crud cutter and I'm just rinsing it with water after I kind of scour it with the scotch Bright pad and yeah that's it for the cleaning. Usually I prefer the crud cutter but I really hate the way that it smells also so I've tried simple green and stuff like that and it works okay but crud cutter always seems to work the best for getting grease off. So for sanding, I usually just go with like fine, which is uh, like 180 to 220 grit for surf prep. I'll use the um, softer, more kind of like foam backed pads on the uh, areas where it's kind of curved or whatever. And then I'll use the thinner foam for the flat surfaces to get it flat. So. Um, yeah, that's really it though. I just usually sand to around 280, maybe 320 sometimes before I put my primer on. And then I'll make sure I clean everything off, get all the sanding dust off, and then I'll spray my primer. So this is Centurion's vinyl sealer, and this is before I knew what kind of top coat I was going to use. I was still thinking I was probably going to use lacquer, but this is okay 
under the kind of 2k urethane that I'm going to use but I don't know that it'd be the recommended primer you should probably use like just like a regular automotive high build primer if you're going to do this um and use car paint but yeah I just decided to use that because that's what I had available and I really wasn't thinking about using car paint at this point So I use my Performance 3M spray gun, and I just use like a 1.6, I think, usually for this coating. This vinyl sealer, I thin it by about 20 to 30 percent, and then with lacquer thinner, and then I'll spray it on. I don't really have any issues with it. It's a pretty good, pretty easy to apply coating. Um, sometimes I just try to make sure that my first coat is a little bit thinner. That way. It, it'll dry faster and there's less of a chance that it'll lift the previous coating because it is pretty hot it's a lacquer based product so it's just something you have to think about and I can't give you every specific circumstance where this primer would work but if you're worried about it then I might use like a 2k primer that's either water based or solvent based but something that's just not as hot as a lacquer I filled the hardware holes, the old from the previous hardware, with uh, quick wood, which is like an epoxy product. You know, it's like the little, it comes in the little rolls. You just kind of ball it up to mix it and then fill it. I like epoxy based fill products better because they don't shrink like Bondo does. coat of primer here really nothing else new just spraying it on I usually just put on two coats of primer sometimes three So this is me mixing up the automotive paint and I'm using Nason's 2K and I had it mixed to color match Benjamin Moore's Webster Green. Now what kind of automotive paint you're going to be able to find is just basically going to be depending on who you, you know, have available near you. Um, a brand like Omni or uh, Sideline I think it's called, there's a lot of brands that will have discount kind of automotive paint products and we're not painting a car so it doesn't have to be top of the line automotive paint so I'll just use one of the cheaper brands but as long as it's a 2k and it's not a lacquer I'm pretty much okay with it I like the 2k urethanes because I can buff them pretty much the next day and so you know like with this I had already put on a coat I just wanted to make sure that the coating was compatible off camera and it worked out okay so I sanded it down and I'm going to put another coat on now. But really the main thing to consider is that, you know, these coatings are a lot harder to spray than like a lacquer in the sense that they have to remain dust free for longer, but not as dust free for long as something like Fine Paints Europe. So that's why I use it. It's a good kind of middle balance. You get about the same gloss as Fine Paints Europe but not as long as the working time and you can cut and buff it. 
So just like a car, I'll actually just sand out all the dust and stuff like that with 2500 grit later once I'm done. And then I'll come back and uh, polish it out to get the shine back. So the way that I do this is that I'll spray three or four consecutive coats like I am in this video. Just take everything in the spray booth. Five to ten minutes between each coat. I'll just blast it on. If it gets a little bit of dust in it, I'm not worried about it because I know that as long as it's on a flat surface, I can cut it and buff it. So the next day I'll do that, but then the first day I'll just spray the paint and it needs to definitely cure overnight, if not longer. The longer the better. But yeah, that's really it. You know, I just spray it with a 1.2 on my HVLP sprayer and uh, that's really it. So this is the starting of kind of like the polishing process and it's hard to see but there's a lot of orange peel and stuff like that in the paint and I just really wasn't being too careful whenever I did it. Um, also just with the kind of shop that I have it's inevitable that I'm going to get a little bit of dust in my coating. It's just I don't have a perfectly ventilated spray booth. I'm going to pull dust in here if I want to work any kind of efficiently. So. What I'll do is, is I'll take this 2000 grit or 2500 grit and I'll sand it, wet sand it, um, just to keep like a spray bottle of water, kind of mist it. And this is just a 2000 or 2500 grit uh, like cushion sanding disc. And it's a six inch, but I only have a five inch sander. So I just use what I have. And I'll just keep kind of grinding on it. The surface should look dull after you're done, but flat. And then from there, I'll move on to polishing with a wool bonnet and a cutting compound like Meguiar's, you know, speed cut or whatever. And then I'll use like a finish kind of polish with like a black or a yellow uh, disc. And I only have a pneumatic three inch polisher because that's like the cheapest thing they sell at Harbor Freight. So that's what I have. And until I am kind of committed to doing things like this. I'm not going to spend any more money on equipment and um, yeah, but I, I use a, I use a three inch polishing disc and I'll just hook it up to my air compressor and go. Um, that's really it. You know, if you have a bigger polisher, it'll, I'm sure it'll work better. And if you know how to polish curved surfaces, please let me know because I've had a lot of trouble with it.
So here's that surface after polishing it, and maybe it's not as good as a lot of automotive geeks out there are used to, but I'm okay with that, you know? It's just, it's got to be good enough, and I think that still, even after cutting and buffing this, I think this is pretty much shinier than just about any lacquer that you're going to find out there. And it just, lacquer, even like clear over vinyl sealer, just doesn't get as shiny as like this automotive paint does. Just using my crag jig to drill my holes. I had three inch centers on my new hardware, so I just use that little jig and just put them where they need to go. And then I'll put my hardware on. And after that, everything was done. I'm pretty happy with this set. You know, it's definitely an interesting experience for me. Not kind of new to the whole automotive paint thing, but I like the way that it works. I like the speed at which you can work with, and I really don't think it's a huge change from the way I'm doing things. So I'm definitely going to try it again.